Next, we want to use these MO, these molecular orbitals, whether they're bonding or antibonding. And there's a diagram in the textbook, figure 1027. Uh, a word of warning, different books will use slightly different pictures. Some will start all the way down at the 1s level. So they'll mix all of the atomic orbitals, 1s, 2s, 2p, and so on. If the picture starts at the 1s level, that means that that picture uses all of the electrons in the molecule. Some pictures, like 1027, start at the 2s level. And that is telling you only use the valence electrons. Because for this class, we're only going to go up to the second row of the periodic table, and we're only going to do diatomics. So things like N2, O2, F2. Here is that picture repeated. And the pictures give you the energy increasing. So the lowest energy level is the bonding 2s, and then comes antibonding 2s. The difference in the table is the energy of the next two levels. Depending on how many protons the atoms have in their nucleus, either the pi 2p is lower in energy or the sigma 2p is lower in energy. So you have to use the correct diagram for the correct molecule. After that level, then the pi star 2p and the sigma star 2p are exactly the same. So there's only a switching between these two molecular orbital levels. And we're going to use this to answer a question such as how does the bonding compare in diatomic nitrogen and diatomic nitrogen with a negative one charge. The picture that I'm using starts at sigma 2s, which means we're just counting valence electrons. And diatomic nitrogen will have 10 valence electrons. We fill in those 10 valence electrons exactly the same way we did when we were doing atomic electron configurations. We start at the lowest possible energy level, put in one electron into each orbital until that level is full, and then we apply Hund's rule. So for example, the first electron will go into the sigma 2s, and then the second, the third, and the fourth fill up the sigma star. Then the fifth, here's where we apply Hund's rule. Number six would prefer to go into its own molecular orbital before it pairs up. Number seven doesn't have a choice. Number eight doesn't have a choice. And then number nine and number ten. So this is the MO diagram for diatomic nitrogen. We can calculate the bond order by calculating one half the number of electrons in bonding molecular orbitals. So we can count up two, four, six, eight electrons are in bonding MOs, and only two electrons are in antibonding MOs. So one half of eight minus two, one half of six gives you a bond order of three. A bond order of three also matches what we had previously with the Lewis structure of diatomic nitrogen. We end up with this Lewis structure. A bond order of three means we have a triple bond between the two nitrogens. If we compare that to diatomic nitrogen with a negative one charge, now we have 11 valence electrons. So number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The eleventh electron goes into an antibonding, a pi star, 2p molecular orbital. This is going to change the bond order. We still have eight electrons in bonding MOs, but now we have an extra electron and it's in an antibonding MO. So this time we get a bond order of one half of five or two and a half. We never had a half of a bond order with the Lewis picture. With Lewis, you can only draw a single bond, a double bond, or a triple bond. 
This is one advantage of MO theory is that it can come up with fractional bond orders, which means if we compare the bonding between a triple bond and a bond order of 2.5, the triple bond will be a stronger bond and we also know that the larger the bond order the shorter it is. Another way we can make this comparison is putting in this extra electron reduces the stability of N2. N2 minus is less stable than diatomic nitrogen with zero charge because it gives you a lower bond order. If the bond order works out to be zero, that means there's no stability formed by making the bond. So if you have two separate atoms and they form a diatomic but the bond order is zero, that means it would be much preferable for the atoms to stay separated. In order for a bond order to be stable, it has to be a positive number, so it has to be greater than a bond order of zero.